Which front end framework should you learn in 2021? Well, let's take a look at two front runners, Angular and React. We'll break it all down, compare the two, and I'll tell you which one I think is the best. What's up everyone, my name is James Hugh Quick and I put out videos on web development uh, once or twice, sometimes three times a week on this channel. So if you're interested in content like that and you enjoy it, uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all those things to help me out, I'd really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, two of these really big name frameworks out there in React and Angular. And I, I wanna kinda come with this from the perspective of so many people are really worried about making the right decision of, oh, which technology or which framework should I learn? They get started in web development, they learn about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and they wanna know kind of what's next. What are, the, what are the things they should be looking at? So I'm gonna uh, give you kind of an overview of React and Angular, talk about some of the built-in features, some of the learning curve, the ecosystem, the community, job opportunities, and then I'll sum it all up by kind of giving you my, my personal perspective on which one of these makes the most sense. So let's start with an, an overview. Uh, Angular is a framework that was created by Google, still is maintained by Google. Uh, it's very structured. It uses TypeScript, which is actually pretty interesting and kind of cool. They have a new version of Angular out every six months. They're pretty committed to that. I think, I'll have to double check this. I think they're at 10 right now. They may be at 11 or 11 is on the horizon. So I think the latest version is 10. On the flip side of that, you have React, which is created by Facebook. It's a lot more lightweight in, in, in terms of code, not necessarily in speed, but in terms of like code, because there's not as much built in. We'll talk about that more in a second. And some of that makes it really easy to get started. Although TypeScript is really nice and Angular, it's another thing for people to learn to be able to get into Angular. We'll talk more about the learning curve here in a second, but React is pretty lightweight and pretty easy to get started. Now I do wanna make one clarification. There is a big difference between Angular JS and then Angular uh, two, three, four, five, or two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess they skipped a few in there. And the big difference is Angular JS was kind of the original version of Angular. It was a lot, uh, a lot more similar to something like Vue is today. And Angular really bet on the future of what web development frameworks would look like, front end frameworks would look like, and they made this big migration to uh, to Angular two, and then four, and then some numbers all the way up to ten. So if you, uh, what I'm talking about today is Angular 2 plus, not Angular JS. So if you see things for Angular JS, it's a completely different topic, not something we're talking about today. So let's dive into some of the built-in features. Uh, let's, let's start with Angular. Uh, Angular as a whole has a lot of stuff built in and you get into uh, lots of debates about framework versus library. A lot of people consider uh, Angular to be a framework and React to be a library because Angular does come really prepackaged with a lot of things that you'll need inside of your uh, inside of your application development process. They have an HTTP client. They've got services uh, that can do some of the business logic from you, for you, from you, for you. Uh, it has a lot of structure. There's a pretty uh, pretty uh, opinionated structure on the file setup and when you create components, what the file structure looks like, and all that sort of stuff in Angular. Uh, then there's also built-in routing, so they've got a router built in as well. And one of the things I really like about Angular is the scaffolding. So the Angular CLI comes with commands to generate components for you. When you generate a component, for example, it gives you a CSS file, HTML file, a TypeScript file, as well as a test file. So all of that stuff being like kind of given to you. Uh, one is really nice. I kind of like that uh, Angular is opinionated because I don't really have to think about my structure and I can just kind of go from there. Complete opposite of that is React, where there's there's not a whole lot that's built in. Uh, you basically have to get extra packages for almost everything that you want to do. A big example of that would be for uh, routing. Routing is not built into just React. Uh, you have to get a package for that. React Router DOM being a common one. And then things like state management are things that you'd pull in, like Redux uh, in for. You can also use the Context API. But when you get into bigger applications, Redux is a popular one there. Uh, and that is only fair to mention that like people bring in outside uh, packages for state management in Angular as well uh, when they when they want to, if they have a preference and they have experience. But uh, Angular just has a lot more built in. React is pretty minimal. And then uh, because of that, you have to pull in outside things. So now let's get into the learning curve. Uh, again, the big difference here being Angular has a ton of stuff built in versus React uh, doesn't. So with Angular, there's lots of things that you have to uh, you have to learn. There's uh, TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. I've got a video on TypeScript in React if you want to check that out. And TypeScript is super cool. It gives a lot of structure to uh, to your JavaScript. It gives you basically strongly 
uh, basically a strongly typed language where JavaScript does not. TypeScript is, and in theory, help you catch errors and that sort of stuff. And that's really nice, but using TypeScript does come with a learning curve, so that's part of it. The other thing is I feel like Angular, there's so much in Angular that is Angular specific. There's syntaxes, syntaxes in Angular that are only used in Angular versus for React for me, almost everything in React is, is really just kind of regular JavaScript. It's stuff that you're used to doing, especially if you're good with ES6, if you're good with classes, that sort of stuff. There's not a whole lot of extra things going on in React that are specific to React. So that's one of the, the downsides for me in the Angular space is it's very powerful, but to do different things, to use the different directives, for example, uh, there's syntaxes that you just have to memorize or you have to look up every time. I have to look up every time. And I especially am kind of, this is top of mind for me because I'm teaching Angular in my Launch Code Bootcamp right now. And I just, I, I realize how much more I have to look up for Angular versus in React. So a little bit of a learning curve difference, again, more powerful with built-in stuff on the Angular side, but harder to get started and learn. React a little quicker to get up and started and learn, but then you've got uh, some extra work to bring in the packages and things that you need to do whatever it is that you need. So let's talk about, let's flip this a little bit. Let's talk about the ecosystem. And this is, for me, a really big checkbox in uh, in the React column where the ecosystem, there's lots of different flavors or of React or frameworks built on top of React. There's Next.js, which if you've seen my videos on this channel, you know I'm a fan of. I've got a Next.js crash course if you want to check that out. Uh, Gatsby.js, which is what I built my personal site with. Redwood and Blitz.js are two newcomers, two hot frameworks out there. And they differently add different things to react. So that gives us lots of options, which may be a downside, but also like once you get into one of these things and appreciate them for what they do, they can give you some of the structure that like Angular doesn't in some ways. They can give you some of the opinion, uh, the opinion, the opinionatedness that Angular doesn't sometimes. Uh, so if you find the right react framework that you really enjoy and it clicks with you, that might like kind of give you some of the things that you uh, would have missed out on or would have gotten in Angular. On the Angular side, it's not there's not near as much going on, at least as far as I know. Scully is the big like kind of static site generator for Angular. And uh, I know there's some built-in things to do like server-side render rendering with Angular, but it just doesn't seem like th to have the ecosystem. There's libraries for each to help you do whatever you want. I would say React probably has a better ecosystem with more different options. Angular is a little more opinionated and can do anything that you want. Uh, but you're kind of a little bit more kind of tied into Angular specifically versus React. It's like it's this whole big thing and it's got stuff built on top of it. And you can use basically like any JavaScript package that you want. So next up for me, and this is a big one, is the community. And I will say that the community for both of these is incredibly large. Uh, I look at conferences. I went to NGConf a few years ago. That was a really cool one. I met some really cool people there. One of my teammates, Sam Julien. Uh, I think we met there. We didn't really know it until kind of like reflecting on it. Uh, and then Chris uh, Sevilleja, who has a YouTube channel, maybe I'll link up to there uh, as well, but met some really cool people at that conference and uh, really saw how big and uh, and really just excited the community is for Angular. And then obviously I've, I've done a lot of React content myself. I've gone, I've spoken at React conferences. Um, I've written content and done videos on React and the community there is huge as well. So I think you really can't go wrong in that sense. There's a whole lot going on. People are willing to share. People love creating content on these frameworks. Uh, so the community there, I would say, is a plus for both. Now, all of that said, uh, a lot of this really comes back to job opportunities. And people are really worried about, like, well, which one should I learn based on jobs? Well, I, I, honestly, I don't think you can really go wrong. But you can also do research into the companies that you might want to, to work at or the companies that are in your area and see which one of these, if either one, they are using. And then just kind of gauge like, hey, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna apply for these 10 companies and eight of them are using Angular, that would probably be a good place to start. But I think regardless of which one you learn, it doesn't mean you can't learn or won't learn the other. So don't think that that excludes you from applying for a job that uses the one that you haven't been focused on. I think they'll really carry over. Now, the big difference for me is Angular for me seems to be much more enterprisey. You'll find Angular in enterprise companies, things like when I worked at FedEx, bigger companies. I think part of that is the structure and the uh, the strong typing that comes with using TypeScript. I think by enterprise companies, they do a lot of uh, .NET and Java and C++, and they're really used to object-oriented programming and strong typing. Something like JavaScript is new and foreign to a lot of those people. So something like TypeScript is a lot more comfortable for enterprise developers in general. 
Um, and because of that, you see the adoption of Angular uh, kind of being more commonly in the enterprise versus React. Uh, used to be kind of just like the hipster thing that kind of people used for fun. And it was what like the cool crowd used. And that's true to a certain extent, but it's also extremely popular in just like real development shops. And the one thing I can tell you is I have heard of companies moving from Angular to React. I've never really heard of companies moving from React to Angular. Uh, so you can kind of take that for what it's worth. You can do a little bit of research in your area, whatever you want. Uh, but I think there are plenty of job opportunities for both. So you can't really go wrong there. So as I wrap this up, uh, which one of these would I suggest? Which one of these would I prefer to learn or recommend for you to learn? I would go with React. And I do want to caveat this with saying like either one of these would be perfectly fine and especially based on your area, but React, the excitement around React, the content around React, the tutorials and training and things you can find around React. I think it's easier to get started. It's a little less intimidating. And then I think later on down the road, if you want to open yourselves up and get more experience and get exposed to the way different frameworks work, then you go look at Angular. If you're already down an Angular path, that's great. Again, I don't think you'll go wrong there. I think you will be able to learn React later on if you want to. React is just an easier thing to get into, in my opinion. And so for that reason, I would recommend it as the first thing you learn and then go back to Angular if you think it's valuable for the jobs and the companies that you might be applying for. So I'm curious, anything that I missed in the comparison, which one of these is your favorite? Which one of these are you going to be learning in 2021, Angular or React? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more videos on different kinds of technology comparisons, React and Angular, React and Vue, Vue and Angular, that sort of thing. Let me know in the comments below as well. I would love to do more of those. I just wanna see if you are interested in it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.